Hey guys, welcome back. Oh, the candles aren't on. There we go. Do you notice something different? We redid the beauty studio. I figured it's a new year. I have been in my old cramped studio for the past two years. So in the wise words of Beyonce, I figured it was time to upgrade. Not only to make my life easier, but to make your viewing experience that much better. And for the first video in the beauty studio, I am doing a video idea I've been sitting on for a hot minute. We're doing a full face of Moira Cosmetics. I bought all this makeup weeks ago, about two weeks before their Black Friday sale, so I paid double what it could have. Yet another victim of my impatience. This is a brand that's been all over social media the past couple months, especially the eye products look breathtaking. So we got a couple questions to answer in this video. First off, for an indie brand, how do they have so many products? I'm talking they have everything. I was on the website. Foundations, concealers, powders, bronzers, blushes, eyeshadows, liquid eyeshadows, pot eyeshadows. The list went on and on. And I know a lot of indie brands can't always invest in launching such a breadth of products. So who is this Moira? David, I cannot show you everything. Okay, well, can you show me one thing? Second, are these really the best liquid eyeshadows in the game? Because according to TikTok, they are. And third, these little star show shadow pots have had me in a chokehold on Instagram. This is why I bought everything, to be honest with you. These looked to die for, so are they as good as they looked? So we probably know their eyeshadow products are gonna serve, but how are the complexion products? That's a big ask. I normally don't use everything from one brand because I think a brand is lucky if they have a couple hero products or stars of the show. So how are these complexion products gonna perform? And lastly, and most importantly, will we ever get a Princess Diaries 3? Okay, I'm just kidding about that last one. Not really, if they do it, Julie Andrews better be in it. Alrighty guys, let's dive in and try this makeup. I've been sitting on for over a month. Before we do, make sure as always to subscribe to the channel. If you are ready, hit the little notification bell and you'll be notified every single time I upload. I upload every single day as well as give this video a big thumbs up. So without any further ado, let's dive in and try a full face of Moira Beauty. First up, we have the Precision Tip Brow Pencil in the shade 02 Blonde Brown. And this bad boy only retails for $6. That's the other thing about this brand. Everything is hella affordable. Let's go ahead and start filling these brows. So I picked up this pencil because I do like a sharper, finer pencil that I can really just kind of make hair like strokes like that. Normally I try to go for like a taupey, cool tone blonde shade, but this does have a bit of yellow in it. And we do have a spoolie on the other end, which I love. I like to just blend this in and feather all that product in throughout the brow. Make sure everything is nice and soft. I don't know if you saw, I posted a short recently that I got my brows laminated and I feel like it's making filling them so much easier because all my brows are actually going in the same direction. Okay, brow pencil, not my fave. It's a little bit of a hard formula. You really have to drag it to get something on. Once it's on, it's fine. It deposits color, but it just is a very hard formula and it doesn't even blend that easy when I go to use the spoolie. So I think it's a little too hard to even get fine strokes. Now we have the Mega Concealer. This is in the shade 150 Cream. I'm going to use this to carve out my brows and prime my eyelids for eyeshadow. Okay, that gave decent coverage. I'm going to set it with the Set and Correct Loose Setting Powder. And this is in the shade 05 Rose Pink. I'm just gonna dust a little over that concealer like I normally would to set everything. Now for eyeshadow, you're not ready for this. This is the A Moment With You palette. I mean, literally the shimmers, the packaging with this clothes and magnet on the bottom. I almost bought the I'm Falling For You palette, which I'll put here, but I have so many purples and I have this color story in really great palettes. I just felt like this one was a little bit more unique for my collection. I'm gonna start with the shade Evermore. This is the closest thing to a transition shade in the palette. I just kind of wanted a nice soft wash of color. It's blending out really nicely, but I don't know if it's really doing anything. Yeah, we're gonna need to go in with something deeper. So this is the shade For Real. I'm gonna use this and just press this exactly where I would have done that transition. Okay, that's doing something. Okay, that is a lot lighter than I thought it was gonna be, which I'm not mad about, because I feel like this is the kind of transition color I was going for. But just like the first one that I could see, this is blending beautifully. Yeah. I'm gonna go in with this darker brown shade in It's Special. There's really also not a lot of fallout in the pan, and I'm gonna stamp this, concentrating this a little lower to deepen up the outside half of the lid and bring it in slightly, because we are going to carve out our lid 
lid with that liquid shadow eventually. So I do want a little of this darker brown right above it. All right, mattes are blending beautifully. Everything is melting into each other so nicely. I did clean up the outside half with a makeup wipe. God, for the shimmer, I don't know what to do. So spoiler, I am gonna pair it with this purple on the lower lash line. So I do want the color I picked to complement it. Plus we have the goldish, which is going on top. So I think I'm gonna go in with the shade with you because it has a little bit of a purpley bronze reflect to it. Literally look at these shadows, you guys. This is one swipe. They are stunning. So I'm just gonna take this on my finger and I'm gonna press this a little farther out. Not covering the matte brown on the outside, but not bringing it in too far here because that's where we want our liquid gold to go. Just gonna take the brush I put the dark brown on with and just marry this into that brown, nothing on the brush. All right, it's that time, tis that time. This is the Diamond Days Liquid Eyeshadow and this is in the shade Gold Star. So watching this on my hand has been a religious experience, but let's see if it translates to the eyes. Um, okay. Well, this delivered on all fronts. This was one coat of this liquid shadow. Oh my God. It gave you just enough blend time to soften the edges. Oh my God, but dried down beautifully. Yeah. I need to get more shades of this. Now I didn't pick up liner and mascara from Moira Beauty. I don't know if they have it. They probably do, they have everything else, but my cart was getting a little too expensive. But I did pick up lashes. These are the 3D Effect by Onyx Vegan Faux Mink Lashes. And this is in the cut Wish. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw on some liner and mascara. I'm gonna use my favorite eyeliner from Eye Method and then we will throw on the lashes. All right, we have one lash on. This is it over here. She is pretty. I love the flare on the end because I just feel like that gives a lot of lift to the eye but the band is really nice like it's just that perfect combination of sturdy enough but not too thick where it's hard to like get it positioned but it's also not too flimsy that like when you go to rip it out of the thing it like falls apart and for glue I'm using the Kiss Lash Couture Super Strong Strip Lash Adhesive in Clear I like the brush with this because I just think you could either like paint it on like liner or put it on the lash band and then go in with the lashes but I just wanted to show you the difference with the lash and without. All right, now for primer, we're going in with the Complete Facial Primer. This is a pore vanishing primer. Let's do a little bit of this, mainly in the T-zone where my pores are the biggest. Okay, this definitely has silicone slip to it. It feels like the Smashbox primer, which I don't hate because I think it gives you a beautiful result, but this is something I really wouldn't wear on a daily basis because I just wouldn't want it to break me out. I would wear this more for like event makeup. And before foundation, I'm just gonna do a little color correcting as I always do with my LA Girl Pro Conceal in Peach Corrector. And now for foundation, we have the Complete Wear Foundation Weightless Full Coverage Ultra Long Wear. This is in the shade 250 Natural Buff. I don't know if you're supposed to shake it, but I'm gonna shake it because I better safe than sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with a little bit. I don't know how much to start with. I know this is full coverage, so I don't wanna overdo it. And reading the website, it does say it has a natural looking matte finish, which I'm not mad about as long as it's not a drying matte finish. I do have combo skin, so I can get away with matte foundations, especially in the T-zone and texture. I think matte foundations, when you have large pores, kind of minimizes that texture and makes everything look a lot just softer and airbrushed. All right, this is the foundation blended out. Let me tell you something, mama's looking blurred. This looks so beautiful on my pores. And obviously I used the pore blurring primer, so it might be a combination of the two. It did have a little bit of trouble applying on my nose with the brush, so I did switch to a beauty blender. After I exfoliate and my skin is very smooth, but I also have this texture and just oil production on my nose. Sometimes the brush doesn't always do it because it's swiping it away, but the beauty sponge is pressed it and leaving it there. So that was the only slight, slight con, but overall, I mean, this just looks so blurring. Now we're going back into the mega concealer on the face. So I'm gonna do a little bit. This concealer feels pretty thick. I'm kind of curious slash nervous how this is gonna work. Yeah, okay, so we have brightness. It definitely has like more of that same kind of natural 
matte finish. All right, now to set everything, we're gonna go in with the loose setting powder to set and correct in the rose pink shade. Go in with my just triangle puff here, work it into the puff. Okay, so this side is set. It is, nah. it's not the most blurring powder I've ever used. It's really kind of doing nothing for my pores, nor is it brightening. Like I don't think that really brightened any more than this side because it's not really that blurring or giving any kind of airbrushed look. I think it could actually end up maybe enhancing texture a little bit more than you want to. So eh, that is kind of just meh for me. All right, now to contour the face a bit, we're going in with the Life's a Picnic palette. We have three blushes, a highlighter, and two bronzers. I'm gonna start out with the lightest bronzer here, and we're just gonna start pressing this on the sides of the forehead connected to the outside of the brow. So it's not glaringly obvious, but this actually seems to have a bit of a sheen to it, which I'm not mad at because it's very subtle. But when it's just that right amount of kind of glow, it can really actually make the skin look a little bit more airbrushed and diffused, kind of like the hourglass powders. A little bit underneath the cheekbone. So when you're contouring, you wanna actually keep it on the cheekbone, don't go under because that's gonna give much more lift. Okay, so see what I mean about the glow? So I contoured my nose with this, which it did much better. I still need to like clean it up with powder, but look at the very tip of my nose. That's the reflection from the bronzer. That is no highlighter. Yet when it's not really being hit by the light, it doesn't look overly glowy. I'm now going in with Picnic Day, the darker shade, and I'm just deepening up the recesses of the contour here. I also love that these two bronzers really do have a beautiful cool undertone to both of them. I will say, and I don't know if this is the foundation or powder possibly underneath. I mean, it's not patchy. I think it might be the glow. And again, that's my skin where anything that has a glow on it really shows the texture. So like I just mentioned, if your bronzer or blush is just kind of blending out, not as seamless, as you want, take a powder foundation, this is the Makeup Forever, and tap off the excess, and you're just going to press a little bit on top, just to add that nice flesh tone layer on top of everything, which is gonna make all of that contour just appear a little smoother. All right, now we're gonna finish up the eye, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of a black pencil. This is my House lab pencil, and I am going to tight line. Okay, now for the Star Show Shadow Pots. These are the entire reason I bought all this makeup. I I was seeing all of the ads for this on Instagram and I was so enamored by how beautiful these looked. So they come in this little pot and normally ones like this that I've gotten before are very crumbly and they just kind of flake out and make a mess, but these don't. They're really like creamy. So that was the dip, one swipe. And that one is in the shade 10 extra, like, what? This is the shade 11 Bang, a pink. And lastly, this gorgeous blue is in 15, holy moly. Oh, are you kidding me? I'm dying to do like a disco smoky eye with this. You have no idea. So now I'm gonna take the shade extra, the purple on a brush. This may be a horrible idea. And I'm going to Smoke this out with this very detailed brush. Okay. We have no fallout yet. I'm shocked that there was no fallout from this. Wow, that looks so pretty. All right, now for lips, we're going in with a lip liner from Moira, the must-have lip liner in the shade number one, Rose Beige. They are sharpenable pencils, which I really like. Okay, well, this color is stunning. I'm just gonna take my finger and blend this in a little bit. Okay, now this was the lipstick and lip gloss I got. Um, I obviously didn't know what like look I was gonna be putting together when I did this, but I think this is gonna be way too warm for the eye look. This is the lipstick swatch there. Yeah, it's just too peachy. Yeah, I think I'm gonna use a different lipstick. I'm even swatching this lipstick. It's kind of patchy, like it's not all that full coverage. So again, that's another reason I'm not like over the moon about using it. The lip gloss is really pretty. That is a little bit more like a formula I'm used to. But again, it might be a little bit too warm and I don't wanna mess up the look. So I'm actually gonna go in with a Revlon Color Stay Satin Ink. I've never tried these and I don't know where this has been all my life. This color looks so beautiful. It's so cool tone. That was the move. I'm gonna try to put a little bit of the Moira gloss right in the center. Oh wow, this feels really nice. It's not sticky at all. Ooh, yeah, that's pretty. All right, so I don't have a setting spray from them, but I'm just gonna go in with my Benefit Super Setter and set everything. 
Take my little handy fan from Lorella Cosmetics, dry it all down, and I just like to press that spray in with my beauty blender. This lays down all the baby hairs, really makes the powder melt into the skin. All right, guys, that is it. This is the finished look. Um, Absolutely obsessed with the eyes. Let's run through everything. Okay, so starting with the palette. Let me get this out of the way. Every single thing that is on the eyes, not only is phenomenal, but may be the best eye products I've ever used. The mattes form like a dream. The shimmers are just like on a next level. Even compared to the pot shadows I was showing you, this is just one shade from the eyeshadow palette. They're just full coverage, blinding, creamy, so, so beautiful. And the other palettes are just as beautiful online. Answering our question from the beginning, yes, this may be the greatest liquid shadow on the market. I've had this on now for like maybe four hours, stopping and starting filming and zero creasing. It is absolutely blinding. It's stunning. It is absolutely stunning. I will hands down be buying more of these. And for the price, these pot shadows as well. I mean, you saw me swatch all them. I can't wait to do a full look with like all of them actually on the eye, like as the star of the show. To die for some of the best, creamiest, blinding shadows I've ever used. They don't make a mess. And for the price. The lashes were and are beautiful. Super easy to apply because the band wasn't too thick or stiff or too flimsy on the uh, other end of the spectrum. And again, for the price, the amount of options on the website is awesome. I love these. Okay, now for the complexion products. So like I said in the beginning, answering my question, we have the primer. It definitely filled pores. I think it does exactly what the Smashbox primer was. If you're looking for a great, super affordable dupe for the Smashbox primer for like event makeup, or just if you are someone into more full coverage makeup, I think you would love this primer. Do I think this is a great everyday primer? No, it's a... Okay, all right, now for the foundation. This is only for people who have combo to oily skin. I think if you have dry skin, flakiness, or mature skin, this is gonna be way too matte for you. I even had trouble on my drier areas kind of making this stick. It was looking a little patchy on the forehead. I know how to fix that with foundation powder. You saw how I did that with the Makeup Forever powder to really just smooth everything. But I will say for people who do have combination and oily skin, I think you would love this. I am having no creasing whatsoever and I always crease like a mother. This is still looking super airbrushed on my pores and no oil has come through through. So I gotta say for a like kind of natural soft matte foundation, especially for the price, this is pretty ballin'. So again though, only if you have combination or oily skin. The concealer for me is gonna be a pass. Mm -hmm. I think this was just a little bit too difficult to work with. It has almost the same thickness and matte kind of dry down that the foundation does, but it's not as emollient as the foundation. It was a little too hard to work with and building up coverage was good. It built up coverage, but it just started to look a little thicker where I kind of had to back it off. It was almost taking away what I loved about the foundation. I just think there are much better concealers on the market. So this is a hard pass. The brow pencil is also gonna be a pass for me. This was mm. way too stiff. It didn't go on very easily at all. It being a fine pencil like this, you want to be able to make light strokes and make light hair-like motions, but you have to push so hard to get anything out, it ends up making things thicker. So then I would say, okay, you can use this to fill general areas, but then when I went to blend it, it didn't really blend that well. So anything you would use this for, it just didn't perform for me, so this is a hard pass. Now we have the Life is a Picnic palette. So this, when I got up and looked at myself in the bathroom, I I can't even explain to you how glowy these powders are. Glowy. Oily skin, no, no, no. Do I would stay away from this at all costs. If you have dry or mature skin, I think you would love this. It almost reminds me of that hourglass powder where it is such a finely milled shimmer that it just makes the skin look hydrated rather than glittery. So yeah, and even this I thought was gonna be way too dark for me, but it 
really wasn't, especially just kind of marrying everything and blending it together. Beautiful, cool tone shade, so it's great for contouring. The blushes were beautiful. You notice I did not use the highlighter um, because this bad boy is super chunky. Because again, this is where I have the biggest pores and the most texture, and I just know that kind of a highlighter is gonna accentuate everything. So if you have dry skin, mature skin, but you don't have big pores and texture, you might like this. For the price, it's great, but um, um, for me, it's gonna be like a meh. Now the Moira Set and Correct Loose Setting Powder in the Rose Pink. I was super excited about this because it's a pink powder, which I love for the under eyes. This, I think, is gonna be a pass mm. for me. It really kind of made my under eyes look a little bit dry. It didn't brighten at all. I just think there's much better powders on the market. You have Huda Beauty, the Yuma Beauty, especially the Givenchy powders like the Mac Daddy, especially when it comes to pink powders, you have the Huda Cherry Blossom. This one just didn't do it for me with the dryness and the lack of brightness, I would be afraid to actually bring this on my entire face because it just looked a little dry. So yeah, this is gonna be a pass as well. Last but not least, the lip products. The only pass is the lipstick. Despite mm -hmm. the color being wrong, just swatching this on my hand, I can tell that it is very patchy. It kind of like clings more in certain areas. You know when you put a lipstick on and it, it's, the coverage is like uneven, like it's fuller coverage in certain areas, and then you end up putting more and more on to get full coverage, but then it just looks thick and too meh. That was this, so this is a hard pass for me, but the lip liner was to die for. This color is like staple front and center on my desk. One of my favorite cool tone nudes I've ever used. And the lip gloss is awesome. This is the Luminizer lip gloss. It is like super just creamy. There is no stickiness. It just feels great on the lips. I honestly want to pick up more of these and the lip liners because both of these were like a dream. So that's it guys, all the questions were answered. I am mad impressed, like mad impressed to come out with such a big range of products that are this good. Like some of this stuff is maybe not my favorite or doesn't quite work for me, but more than half of this is great to the best things I've ever used. So. I'm floored, a and again, for the price, to die for. And sadly, we may never know if Princess Diaries 3 is gonna happen. But that is it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I am so honored that you stayed around to watch the first tutorial in my new beauty setup. If you're new here, my name is Johnny. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and click the little notification bell so you don't miss an upload. I upload every single day, makeup, comedy, and everything in between. And if you wanna see how I redid my beauty studio, breaking everything down, buying everything, building it back up together. Go ahead and watch this video next. It's super cool. Wherever you guys are, I hope you are happy, safe, and healthy, and I will see you on the next video. Bye, guys. Bye.